Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and it's a bank holiday, so I've managed to do this during the day. So glad there aren't any games today because I've got to work tomorrow. Right, so this is the Midnight Mule Mini League. Let's see who did what and then what my vague plans are for game week four. Top scorer for game week three was Oliver Burt with Thrash Gash Get Cash with a massive 90 points without playing any chips. So look at this team, amazing. Cash got 17, Udogi got 12. Fernandez got 12, Saka got 8, Captain Harlan got 8, Jackson 7, Rashford 7, Sanchez 6, Chilwell 6, Pedro Porro 6. Everyone apart from S. Dupinan got a return. Amazing. And then on his bench, Bowen got 12 points. But not many people would have thought to play Bowen instead of S. Dupinan. So that's an amazing score. Well done. Top of the league is Mark Hubbard with Marksman. On a total of 209, something I want you to remember, I'll remind you if I remember, the top five have got 205 or more points in our league. Right, back to Mark Hubbard. He played the bench boost, that's why we've got 15 players showing. So we've got Fernandez on 12, Udogi on 12, or Undogi, I know different people say it different ways. Saka on 8, Haaland on 8, Jackson on 7, Chilwell on 6, Rashford on 7. And then nobody else really did anything else. But he's still top of the league, so well done there. As for myself, I'm all the way down in 136th now with a very poor 42 points. So Oh, and I and I made a transfer. I took a hit, so I actually got four points worse than that. I took out Trent because he was marked as flagged and his price was predicted to go down. And Joel Pedro, who it looked like he could well be starting on the bench, which he did, and brought in Trippier who I knew I was going to want in a week or two anyway, and Vissa. Um, two players I took out, got two points. Two I brought in, got two points. So I made no gain this week from doing that at all. So I could have done nothing, done it next week, and I'd have got the same score. Actually, I'd have been four points better off, I guess. So nobody got any double digits for me. Saka, eight. Captain Harland, eight. Jackson, seven. Chilwell, six. Salah, five. Nobody else did anything. The only good thing to say about my team was I didn't leave any points to speak of on the bench. So <laughs> there's something nice. I would have been so sad if somebody on the bench got a lot of points. So 42 points, game week rank just outside the 5 million. Not so good. So overall points, 169. Overall rank just outside the 2 million. So a red arrow. But if we look at live FPL and see how I am there, I'm 9 points from 1 million. 17 from half a million and 17 from the 4 million mark but it's so early on I'm like as close to 1k as 1k is to first place so um, rank doesn't mean an awful lot now you can be sure that if I was higher ranked I'd be saying rank's very important but as I'm around the 2 million mark yeah rank's not so important at the moment 741 of you like to watch <laughs> my misery and mistakes thank you very much for subscribing FPL Game Week website. If you go there, they have a content creators section. You can see how they're doing. So top is currently Nathan Bacon FC FPL. He's played three chips so far. So the top FPLer that I actually watch, FPL Fran, he's on 207. Um, for me, he's actually the most useful YouTuber out there regarding FPL stuff. I actually watch quite a few. But he doesn't follow the herd as much as the other people. So a lot of people were talking about Sterling last week. He actually brought Sterling in. Uh, and that's true for other players. He actually does the move rather than just what the others seem to do, which is wait to see who else is doing it and just bring in who's popular. So I really like FPL Fan. So he's on 207. But if you remember the Midnight Mule League, the top five were all around that mark anyway. So if they were in this league they'd be right near the top beating all the other content creators. As for me, I'm down in 53rd, which really isn't very good. The only good thing to say about that is I'm still above Nima, FPL Nima, so that's nice. If you've ever been on an FPL meet, you might know him from that. Otherwise, you may know him from Net the Hall. And I'm above Az, who I believe is a Brighton fan. So something good to say about Az, at least Brighton's in Sussex, and I grew up in Sussex. Assuming I have grown up, of course. So my options, what am I doing for my transfers for game week four? Well, option one, which is possibly the most likely, is to just do nothing. 
Now, if I was doing a wild card and I was picking my team now, I'd probably choose less than half the players I have got. But of my starting 11, apart from maybe Pickford, there's none of them that I really don't like. So I may well just chill and resist the urge. However, I can uh, be rather impulsive. <laughs> and who knows? Maybe I'll do something crazy before the deadline anyway. But another option I've got, option number two, I've called it. I could take Matoma and or Saka and swap for any combination of Sterling and or Mads and or Foden. Now, the two players on the left are very good players and they can, because they're good players, score points against anyone. The three players on the right, the same is true for them, but they also have better fixtures than the players on the left. So I could do a transfer here for either three or minus four points. And I may get more points long term, but I need to think about it. Another option to get the couple on the two of the three on the left is I can actually sell Salah and Nakamba and get any of the two on the right. And any two on the right are going to score more probably than Salah and Nakamba. However, Nakamba's on my bench, so if I did that, I'd then have to put probably either Matoma or else. Rissa on my bench. So then it is Salah and Matoma going to get fewer points than the two on the right. And how sure am I of that? So I really don't know what I'm going to do. So I'm going to assume for now I'm not going to do anything, but I may change my mind and I always try and remember to tweet my team before the deadline anyway. So my team as it stands, and this is my probably likely team, is I have Haaland as captain at home to Fulham, so he gets the old mule hat. And then Salah at home to Aston Villa. And Salah is predicted on, I think, all the predictor sites to be the midfielder that will score the most points probably in the next few weeks. Of course, he won't be, but he's given the highest chance of getting the good scores. Apart from that, I've got Chilwell at home to Forest with Jackson. I have a stupid at home to Newcastle, who have probably lost Botman, so they may be slightly more leaky with his mate Matoma. I have Mbwemo at home to Bournemouth with his mate Vissa. So all of those playing at home could well get some decent points. Then the last three are away. That's Saka. Oh no, Saka, sorry. He's at home to Man United. I think that's going to be a 1-1, maybe a 2-1. So he may get some points there. I think there's a reasonable chance neither side to keep a clean sheet. But I have no United or Arsenal defenders or keepers anyway. Then I have Pickford away to Sheffield United. And I have Trippier away to Brighton. But Trippier could get an assist or even a goal against anyone, really. And on the bench, I've got Turner away to Chelsea, Bulldog at home to Everton, so possible clean sheet, but there's no one that I'm currently playing that I would gamble switching him out for. Bay is likely to be injured, and Nakamba home to West Ham. In case you were wondering about the picture, my youngest daughter, who drew the logo for the Midnight Mule, she has been rehearsing this last week and then did a production with some other local kids, or teenagers rather, of Oliver Twist from the slums of Victorian London. Incredibly sad story, I think, Oliver Twist, but the workhouse, the poor house, whatever. Very, very sad state of affairs. And in case you're wondering, they did a very good job of Oliver Twist, I, I think, considering they had a week to rehearse it and it was just basically kids, they did very, very well. As for the football, not so good in game week three. Let's hope I do an awful lot better in game week four and I hope you do too. And let's see if we can keep the best people in the Midnight Mule League to do better than the content creators. Thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs>